brought to you by Kellogg's. Kellogg's Cereals. The best to you each morning from Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now, live from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, our publisher panelist, the president of Random House, Mr. Bennett Sir. Well, the regular viewers of What's My Line will recognize the fact that our panel is a little bit discombobulated tonight. I'm sitting in this unusual seat for me because both of our lady panelists are indisposed this week. Dorothy recuperating from an illness, and then on Wednesday, to make matters worse, Arlene, to her intense disgust, came down with a magnificent four-star case of chicken pox. <laughs> and it, it's, no, it's no fun for, uh, for an adult to get chicken pox. Well, in their place, we've got two very charming ladies, and the first of them, it's my pleasure to introduce one of the loveliest girls I know, one of the stars of To Tell the Truth, Miss Kitty Carla. Thank you, Bennett. And on my left, you will see a marvelous comedian, Tony Randall, soon to be seen in a forthcoming picture, Island of Love. Nice to see you. I'm privileged to introduce one of the loveliest ladies in, in today's theater, and above and beyond her looks, as a testimony to her ability, last season she won the coveted Tony Award, Miss Phyllis Newman. And I am very excited tonight because I'm the first girl in the long history of What's My Line to introduce the very handsome and talented moderator, John Daly. Well, I trust Bennett won't take umbrage, but I must say Phyllis is a much prettier introducer for me than Bennett is. <laughs> I must say we are fortunate to have Kitty and, and Phyllis to help us tonight with uh, Dorothy and Arlene Ill. I think at the same time we must all agree that our two dearest and fondest critics will be looking in tonight, so we better be on our toes. And we have some very interesting occupations to prove your mettle. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the program, and we'll meet our first challenger. And now to meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Walter? Patterson, right, sir? <laughs> Mr. Patterson, where are you from? Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee. That's right. Nice to have you mm -hmm. with us. May I present the panel, Mr. Patterson? Mm -hmm. Now, will you join me over here? Do you know how we keep score, sir? Yes. Fine. In that event, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Panel, we can tell you that Mr. Patterson is salaried and deals in a service, and let's begin the general questioning with uh, Phyllis Newman. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Patterson, can both men and women use your service? Yes. They can. Do you work for a profit-making organization? Yes. Uh, if you did your service and I wanted to have your service, would I have to come to you? Yes. If I came to you and I had your service, would I be happier or benefit in any way? We hope so. Yes. Would you, excuse me, <laughs> touch me, or would I touch you in any way? No. No, I that's one down. <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> help, Mr. Sir. That's Mr. Patterson's lot, I'm sure. <laughs> Bennett? Mr. Patterson, you have a very broad pair of shoulders. Uh, does your work in any way involve the entertainment or sporting world? 
Yeah. Would it be the sporting world? No. Two down and eight to go, <laughs> Miss Carlyle. You uh, perform your services in the entertainment world. Right. Uh, do you perform them in uh, what you might loosely call a theater? Such as an... Uh, well, uh, let, me, let me phrase it differently. John, wait a minute. I haven't said a word. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid of you. I haven't said a word. Would you perform it in a large auditorium, sort of? Yes. Uh, would this auditorium be something that could house a great deal of uh, entertainment, a great many people? Right. Uh, would it also uh, house animals? Could. Yes, it could. Um, would it be something like Madison Square Garden? Yes. Uh, would you have anything to do with uh, the circus? Yes. Um, uh, the, the, the circus is coming. <laughs> on April 3rd, as a matter of fact. The circus is coming on April 3rd to Madison Square Garden. That's Are what. you a performer in the circus? That's right. Do you do something uh, other than on the ground? Yes. Do you perform in an aerial way? Yes. <laughs> I think we could say he performs in an aerial way. Uh, are you shot out of a cannon? Yes! <laughs> not only that, Mr. Patterson gets shot out of a cannon with, your, with his wife, do you not, That's right. Yeah. What is it? What do you, it's, it's, uh, what do you use as the uh, Compressed propeller? Air. Compressed, Compressed air. Compressed air. And how high an arc do you uh, um, I. I make the, the big jump, my wife comes out first, and I make the big jump. I go uh, 60 feet in height and 175 feet in distance. Good heavenly day. What do you it's, think about it's a nice while you're long dive. <laughs> I think Tony's got a great question. What do you think about while you're on your way, so to speak? It's, it's hard to say. It's That's weird. You're <laughs> probably one of the few married men in America who goes out twice a day with your wife. With your wife. <laughs> You know, I think we ought to let Bennett come in first more often. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, I'm sorry that we didn't give them a little more trouble, Mr. Patterson, but it was nice to have you on What's My Life. Good to see you. You belong here. <laughs> well, a very good beginning, panel. Let's see what we can do with the second challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Donna? Mega, right, man? <laughs> Is it Miss or Mrs. Miss. Mega? Miss Mega, and where are you from? Dallas, Texas. From Dallas, Texas. Well, nice to have a Texan with us, and may I present the panel. Now, would you join me over here, Miss <laughs> Mega? Do you know how we keep score? Yes, sir. Fine, then we'll let the audience at home and the audience in the theater know exactly what your line is. Miss Meager is salaried and deals in a service, and let's begin the general questioning this time with uh, Bennett Sir. Miss Meager, uh, the service that you perform done for a non-profit making organization? Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> would that non-profit making organization possibly be the United States government? It is. Uh, I heard some rumbles from the audience. Not supposed to be helpful, but I couldn't help hearing a murmur when you came out. Would the work that you are connected with be something that uh, might cost citizens of the United States considerable sums of money? You could say that, yes. Would it be in any possible way connected with taxes? Yes. Income taxes? Yes. This is a time of year when we think of these things, Mr. Baker. Do you uh, only think I, about them at this time of year, Bennett? Well, I've been thinking about them over the weekend, rather consistently. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Mega, are you then connected with the United States Department of Internal Revenue? I am. Well, what am I supposed to decide now, John? Just what it is that Ms. Speaker does with the United States Department <laughs> of Internal Revenue. I think she's in, uh, helps people uh, collect, uh, pay their income taxes. 
Well, I think, broadly speaking, we would have to agree that Ms. Meager helps the people pay and the government collect income taxes. But what specifically would you identify, Ms. Meager? I would think she had a great deal to do with running the Dallas Department of the Department of Internal Revenue. Well, now, actually, we'd have to give you a no on that because uh, Ms. Meager doesn't work in Dallas. She works uh, here in New York. That's uh, one down <laughs> to go. Ms. Carla. Um, are you in any way connected with people who are delinquent in their taxes? Sometimes, yes. Mm. Uh, do you uh, discover that they're delinquent? No, I do not discover that. No, that's two down and eight to go, Mr. Randall. Hmm. Do you audit them or help prepare their audits or go over their taxes or talk with them or console them <laughs> or uh, shed a friendly tear now and then? <laughs> Somewhere in that <laughs> omnibus question of yours, there is a germ of truth. <laughs> I'd like to pass that germ on to Phyllis Newman. <laughs> and just hope it isn't chicken pox, Phyllis, that's all. Well, thanks a lot, Tony. <laughs> you uh, collect taxes in some way. In some way, yes. All right, let's get down to basics. <laughs> if you were doing my taxes, uh, God forbid, <laughs> would I come to your office to give you the money? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Ms. Meager, I would fact that you help people prepare their taxes, that they come to you for, and uh, you go over the records with them and help them make out their income taxes and answer questions they may have to ask. About Very good, Bennett. No, no. that's four <laughs> down and six to go, Miss Carlyle. Now, we established that Miss Meager only deals with people who are delinquent no, in their taxes. No. no. no? Well, we, had, we did uh, establish that Miss Meager has something to do with people who could be delinquent in their taxes, yes. Um, are you perhaps connected with the Justice Department of the Bureau of Internal Revenue? No. No, but I will say there, I think it's a matter of, of nomenclature. I think, Kitty, you were getting at it. I'm going to throw all the cards over. Actually, Ms. Meager is attached to the legal department of the Internal Revenue Department in Treasury and handles civil cases, is a lawyer, and is a lawyer for the United States government attached to the Internal Revenue <laughs> Uh, Mr. Daly and I and our guest panel is going to be able to take people out and charge a little bit of it to expense accounts. Well, I can't commit myself to that. <laughs> that's, that's fine. But I'm glad you didn't because um, I want, the, you know, I want you and Bennett to get to know each other better. <laughs> Just let that suffer a little while. And Miss Mika, thank you very much for joining us on What's My Line. It's nice to have a look. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from us. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery guest, for which, as you all know, the panelists are all blindfolded. Are the blindfolds in place, panel? Yes, yes. sir. Good. Will you enter Mystery Challenger and sign in, please? of our mystery guest, one question at a time, in turn moving clockwise, and we'll begin with um, Tony Randall. May I assume that you are in the entertainment business? Oh, yes. I believe I would say so. Miss Newman? Um, do you appear on television? Yes, I have them many a time. Yes. What? <laughs> yes, oh. Mr. Sir? Have you any connection either through acting or any other part of the work connected with a motion picture that is just recently opened in New York. I, I think you're on the wrong track, Bennett, old boy. One down to nine to go, that's a no. Miss Carlyle? You're terribly well known, judging by the applause. Um, are you Not on necessarily, I owe them money. <laughs> <laughs> are you on television? Hey, you, you. You are? Yes. Mr. Randall? I'm trying to place the voice, and I'm not getting anywhere. Uh, you know, it's a funny thing. I can't place it either. <laughs> are you uh, 
more of a, a musical entertainer than a straight entertainer. The critics have different things to say about that. <laughs> Did you say, are you more of a musical entertainer than a, than a what, Tony? Than a straight entertainer. I was thinking of comedian or straight actor. The question is, are no, you... I would think we would give you a, a yes on that. Musical performer. Mm -hmm. Well, then, I, actually, I'm taking your question, you know, as, as it's offered and saying that the, the musical connotation certainly should get some emphasis. Miss Newman? Oh, uh, I think I, I recognize the voice. Uh, do you have red hair? I did have one. <laughs> uh, can I take a guess? Yes. Is it Arthur Godfrey? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, this is a great night for me because, in, in a way, actually, we grew up, but it, it's well, what we, we sure grew did. up because he helped bring me up. Oh, right? 1937, when I started in radio for CBS, this was one good mentor who would take me by the scruff of the neck and taught me a great deal about it. You're better looking should've... now than you were then. <laughs> well, I've got less hair. <laughs> no, very nice to be with oh, you again, John. You. All Bless the your bounce you got. I heard a story about you, actually, when I heard you were coming on tonight, that you were in a, in a club and got up and sang songs the other oh, evening. Oh, Peggy, bless her sweetheart. She, Peggy Lee? Yes, mm -hmm. Peggy Lee came on the radio show the other day with me, and uh, we did a duet together. It was... Very nice, very nice you went, but she had never heard the song before. You know the one, Talk to Me, Talk to Me, Talk oh, to yeah, Me? Oh, yeah. yes, Well, you can sing another song underneath that that goes right with it, you know, the same accompaniment. Uh, kiss Me Once, Kiss Me Twice, Kiss Me Once Again. They fit together. So she and I did that together on the radio, and that night I went to see her at Basin Street, and uh, when she found out I was there, she introduced me, and then I asked if I would come up and sing with her. And I said, if you remember the duet, sure. And she said, sure, I remember it. And we got up together, and we did that duet, and it was aggressive. the best fun I've had in a long time. Well, it must have been. You know, that's a, that's a about lot it. of women, John. That is absolutely true. <laughs> and Mr. Godfrey hasn't changed since I met him in 1997, really. <laughs> Arthur, it was wonderful well, so to have nice you with us. Thanks for coming. Yes, sorry. I, I think this is amusing and interesting. Uh, a few years ago, I don't remember how many, three, four, five, something like that, I replaced Mr. Godfrey on both his radio and TV shows for a considerable period of time, had a great deal to do with them, and tonight's the first time I ever met him. Oh, for Lord's sake. Huh? Well, that's great. Isn't it amazing? Well, I hope he stay, can stay a bit after mm -hmm. so you two can get to know one another. Well, you certainly should. Yeah, you, know, you know, another thing, John, uh, people might be interested to know that Arthur Godfrey is one of the few entertainment personalities for whom a great big street has been named. Down in Miami Beach, mm -hmm. Arthur Godfrey Drive is one of the main thoroughfares of Miami Beach. Well, I, he is beloved over much of this nation, and I guess now with radio and television, much of the world. He's a wonderful man. I must say, you've been a wonderful panel, and we have to agree that you've done uh, extremely well so far tonight, and uh, we'll meet another contestant after this word from our alternate sponsor. And now to meet another contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Chris? Wheatcroft. Wheatcroft. Right, sir. Mr. Wheatcroft, where are you from? I'm from Nottingham, England. Nottingham, England. Oh, right. fine. How long have you been over here with us? I've been here since the 2nd of January. A visit? A visit on uh, a fellowship which is sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce of Nottingham. Oh, wonderful. And I'm visiting Good this will. country. So what we're really interested in is what you do at home, right? Correct. Mr. Wheatcroft, may I present the panel? Now, would you join me over here, please? Coming from England, I must ask you if you're familiar with the scorekeeping system on Once My Life. I am, yes. All right, then we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. All right, panel. Mr. Wheatcroft is salaried and deals in a product. And we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Kitty Carlisle. Thank you, John. 
Uh, Mr. Wheatcroft, uh, is your product used by both men and women? It is. Um, is it used all over the house? Yes. In a manner of speaking, I see. Um, could I hold it in my hand? Yes. And um, if I used it, would I be um, happier? I sincerely hope so. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'd just be happier in my mind, or would I be physically happier? In, in your mind. In my mind. Yes, that was one question I shouldn't have I'm allowed so since it couldn't have been answered yes or no. But in, it, since uh, Mr. Wheatcroft answered it, there's nothing I can do about it, Kitty, anyway. Would I put this on my body? It could be. You might. Would I use it more from the waist up? I would imagine so. <laughs> from the neck up? Mm. According to the country, I think. Yeah. Well, what? I would say here, we have to take American terms of reference, yes. and yes. I would say, Kitty, using American terms of reference, we would have to give a no to that, uh -huh. if you'd agree, Mr. Wickcroft. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Rand. Uh, a non-counting question. Isn't Nottingham where Robin Hood sprung from? Yes, that is correct. Absolutely. <laughs> a spring. Oh. From the frame of questions that, uh, that Kitty gave us, it would seem that what you produce, or your product, is something that's worn. Is that, is that right? Uh, it can be worn. But it's not always worn. Not always worn. It's a manufactured product. No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Newman. It's not a manufactured product, and I could hold it in my hand. You is could. it now, or has it ever been alive? It is. It is alive. Right now, it's alive. <laughs> well, now, you see, here we, again, we have that, that old problem. Are you making specific yes, reference here to animal life? No. You're not. Well, that's <laughs> fine. Then you can see. If uh, I held it in my hand and I held it up to the audience, would they laugh? If I had it here with me and held it up? No. No. Three dollars and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Wheatcraft. In the manufacture or in the producing of this product, is there anything used that is, has been part of an animal at one time? No. That's four down and six to go, Miss Carlyle. This is nothing to do, I assume this has nothing to do with apparel. I beg your pardon? This has nothing to do with wearing apparel, I'm assuming. Oh. Yes, I think it's fair. Something it is not apparel of, its, of its, itself. It is not a, a wearing apparel of itself. Is it something that has some kind of an odor? Mm -hmm. It does. <gasps> is it um, liquid? No. Five down and five to go, Mr. Randall. Mr. Wheatcroft, your very name is indicative of an occupation. Is your name a clue to your occupation? I got the name before the occupation. But... <laughs> that is correct. You have yes. something to do with, uh, with crafting wheat in some way or other. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to... We're run out of time. Is liquor... Is this any... Is liquor... liquor no. Liquor? No. No, no, not no, all. It's, no, no. It's, it's, Anything uh, to eat? No. Well, I suppose... I understand no. some people do, but Mr. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Wheatcroft grows roses. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Wheatcroft and Sons Limited grow roses and export them all over the world, and I would think some two years ago, Mr. Wheatcroft's father was with us here, so it's a particular joy to have him here on a Roosevelt mm -hmm. scholarship and seeing mm -hmm. America. Uh -huh. Thank you very much, Thank sir. You. Nice to have you here. Really good. <laughs> and now, good night, Bennett, sir. Good night, Arlene. Good night, Dorothy. Good night, Kitty. Love Thank you. Good night, Tony. Good night, Kitty. Does everyone realize how good Kitty was her first time yes, on the show? Yes, she's wonderful. Good night, Mrs. Green. Oh, thank you. Good night, John. And good, good night, night Phyllis. And good night, Dorothy. And good night, Arlene. And thanks for being with us on What's My Line? What's My Line?